Hi there, and let's have some fun making tassels. What you have on the screen in front of you right now is a bookmark, or it will be a bookmark, with an applique outline and a tassel at the bottom. When you insert this bookmark in your book, your alligator or crocodile will be facing the right way and the tassel will be extending outside of the book, making it easier to find your bookmark place. This is the actual tassel we are going to make in this lesson, and it is slightly different than the bookmark tassel in that this tassel has a little braided rope edge, and it has the connecting loop here, as well as the applique or the satin stitch column here. But the basic principle is exactly the same. You can add as much in the way of extra objects to your tassel as you wish. Let's go ahead and digitize the tassel. The first thing to do is to click on Edit, Preferences, and select the correct hoop size. You're going to use your 10 centimeter or 4 inch hoop, so click on the second selection down, check mark, save and apply. You now have the correct hoop size, and just leave your color at the default of blue. Click on the outline tool, and you want curve stitch selected for your edge type, and you don't want any check marks there. Start over at the left and just put a nice curvy line, three or four nodes, or however as many as you feel you need, and then make your line curve up, down, whatever you like. Just make a nice curvy line. And I'm going to move this one back slightly and press the space bar to finish object. Right-click, Parameters. You'll want to set your parameters to Rope 2, which is a border, so click on Border. Then go down to Rope 2. Set your width to 3 millimeters, or experiment this with this a bit and choose your own width, and an equal width at the bottom of 3 millimeters. Click on the O check mark, Apply, Take a look at your rope and decide whether or not you like it. If you're satisfied, click on OK. Design, save as, save your design with the inappropriate name and in a folder of your choice. The remaining objects will be done with the Create Column Stitch tool. Once you select the tool, then you want to click over here, make sure you have Curve Stitch and a column. No check marks in any of these selection boxes. Place your first node right on top of your outline. Let's move the second node over there for now and then just bring it back so it's touching the first node. Select your first node, go down, put a second node, select your second node, go down and again put a second node. Move these close together and then just pull out your curve nodes to make a circle. You might have more of an oval shape than a circle, but that will be fine. Press the space bar to finish object. Right click parameters. You want to set your parameters to a straight stitch. Density will be 4.0, pull compensation 0.2. Remove auto corners and leave your underlay as is. Click on Apply, look at your circle to make sure it looks good, and then click on OK. I'm just going to click on Edit to remove the stitches because I want to make sure my circle is overlapping my outline. And again, I'll click on Edit and remove the stitches. As you can see, my circle is overlapping the outline, which is what I want. Now click on Transform. Create connection, and you have a very small connection stitch between the start point of your circle and the end point of your line. The bar that will hold the tassels together will be the next object, so again, create column stitch. This time you want a tool, but you want a straight stitch. Notice that this object has your stitches going horizontally. The next object, we want the stitches going vertically. So click right here for the first node, come right below it, click below for the second node. 
and try to keep them perfectly in line. Go back to your first node, click over to the right, second node, click over to the right. Press the space bar to finish object and you're done. Now I'm going to do one more thing, just a hint. When you're working with these objects and you want a straight line, use a guideline. I'm back in edit mode and if I pull this down, I now will attach to the guideline as long as I have snap to guidelines selected. So I can pull this down and you can see it will snap right back up to the guideline. Bring your top one down, do the same thing, and you can also bring in horizontal guidelines. And you can see this one is slightly off. When you're finished with your guidelines, click on Edit, Erase Guidelines. Press the space bar to finish object, and if it is not centered under your other object or you want it a little bit longer, just drag it out. Right click, Parameters, and for this you want density 4.0, again you still want straight stitch. Bring your pull compensation up and uncheck Auto Corners. Apply, take a look at it to make sure you're satisfied with it, and then click on OK. This object is in the wrong position. We want it to be on top of the tassels, but we need it in this position so we know where to put the column for the tassels. The tassel is the final object, and again, you're going to use the column stitch tool. Before doing that, though, let's erase stitches. Right click erase stitches. If you don't have your stitches visible, it makes it much easier to see where you want to place your notes. So again, column stitch, straight stitch, and you don't need a check mark in guidelines. Place your first node slightly inside your previous column. Second node down at the bottom as long as you like. Go back to your first node, click over to the right. Second node, Click over to the right and make sure they're straight. Press the space bar to finish object. Now when you generate stitches, it looks terrible. You don't have any stitches. Right click, parameters, and you want to select wide satin stitch right there. You don't want any underlay, so remove your underlay. Remove your auto corners and click on Apply. Once you apply, you can see you now have stitches. Click on OK. Going back into parameters one more time, I forgot one little thing which is very important. You want to change your density. Take your density down anywhere from 3.2 up to 3.5 or 3.6. I'm going to put mine at 3.3 this time and click on the check mark and OK. And again, I'm going to generate stitches and you can see I have a much better coverage because I increased the density. Now, you want two passes of your threads because it will be a thicker tassel. Edit Copy, Edit Paste. And the shortcut for Paste is Control V as in Victor. I now have a second copy. But all your stitches at the bottom are going to be piling on top of each other right there. So simply drag your copied object a little bit longer than your original object. It will make it much easier to remove stitches. And if you use water-soluble thread in your bobbin, it will make it even easier to remove stitches. So there you have them both. Let's generate stitches. And everything looks good. The last step is to move objects and add connection stitches. Your crossbar has to embroider in last position. Left click to select, right click and drag it down. Insert after. Now we need connections. Begin with this one. Transform, create connection. And edit the connection if it's necessary. This one, it won't be necessary so you're fine. Now let's go down to the next one. Transform, Create Connection. Control E is Edit, and you have a connection right across at a 45 degree angle. 
You definitely don't want that. So let's delete the connection. And Control E is the shortcut for edit. In edit mode, simply click on reverse nodes order. And that was done for your second one. Now click on transform create connection. Your connection is now running along the edge, which is what you want. While you are still in edit mode, change the maximum length of your connection all the way over to its final size, which is 8.0. Click on the check mark. The reason for that is it is easier to unpick your stitches. And your final con connection, transform, create connection. And again, it is running down the side, but you will want to edit and change your maximum length again up to 8.0. Click on the check mark, press the space bar, and your entire tassel is now complete. Generate stitches for everything. Check to make sure that there are no errors or any obvious things that you have to correct. Save your design and then send it to editor. After you embroider your tassel, then all you want to do is unpick the bobbin stitches underneath the tassel area itself. And you will have a gorgeous little tassel. One last final step is if you want your actual tassel itself a different color, just change these objects to a different color and it will force a stop at the embroidery machine. Enjoy your tassel and thank you.